hey beautiful people of the most high god so the most high wants me to help you break all forms of bewitchments enchantments sorcery magic black magic you know all evil all type of hocus pocus because it's done in many different ways so before i give you the scriptures i'm just going to break it down because this is a long video and um it's going to be a long video because of the information and you should have your paper and pen to you know jot down some scriptures to help you because there's different forms of witchery that's done there's enchantments right there's weapons everyone just uses no weapon formed against you shall prosper but there's many different tactics the enemy uses there's evil div inventions there's evil devices there's evil div evil devices evil imaginations evil cords spell bindings you know i'm gonna explain it as i go evil eye there's evil wishes and you can destroy all of these things with scriptures there's evil words evil pronunciations evil decrees and declarations right um um, there's evil bands, bands of wickedness. There's evil covenants and evil contracts, evil embargoes, and evil agreements. I'm going to teach you how to break all of this with the word of God. Well, this is what God wants me to do, so I'm going to do it. Evil To break evil yokes, evil work against you. Um, gates of brass, bars of iron, powers of darkness right and darkness in itself because these are all works of darkness and you have to combat that with light the word of god which is sharper than any two-edged sword right so evil writings and evil ordinances right so i'm just going to go through it quickly before i give you the scriptures evil desires so witchery comes in many forms evil desires people can have evil desires against you um to break chains trouble off you and darkness so these are and distress and to remove pollution uncleanness and defilement i think the only thing i never put in here was sickness illnesses and diseases but i guess i'll do that for part two all right so let's get into it these are scriptures you should know to help you and these are scriptures god wants you to know to help you to destroy all these works works of evil that are on people that witchery and sorcery and black magic and enchantments and charms they come in many different forms works of darkness comes in many different forms and you can combat that with the word of god right so we're going to get into it just scrolling up to the top so this is enchantments this is numbers 23 and 23 surely there is no enchantment against jacob neither is there any divination against israel so this scripture will break enchantments and evil divination is like evil prophesying against you you know people speak bad mouth things over people's life or anything so surely there is no enchantment against jacob neither is there any divination against israel according to this time it shall be said of jacob and of israel what god has wrought and with doctrine and covenants 109 and 32 therefore we plead before thee for a full and complete deliverance from under this yoke break it off O lord break it off from the necks of thy servants by thy power that we may rise up in the midst of this generation and do thy work psalms 121 and 7 the lord shall preserve thee from all evil he shall preserve thy soul so this is a protection from all evil the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall protect, preserve thy soul. Now weapons. Obviously everyone says this. Isaiah 54 and 17. No weapon that is formed against you, thee shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against thee in judgment. 
That's when evil judgments are spoken against you. Thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the ser servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Now destroying evil inventions. Psalms 99 and 8. Thou answers them, O Lord, our God. Thou was a God that forgaves them, though thou took vengeance on their inventions. Now destroying evil devices. Now, Job talks about people having evil thoughts and evil devices about him. So I just wanted to share Job 21 and 27. Behold, I know your thoughts and the devices which you which he wrongfully imagined against me. So you see why he had to break evil devices against you, right? He with Job 5 and 12. He disappoints the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform perform their enterprise. All right? So destroying evil imaginations. So you, this, in Lamentations, it talks about people having evil imaginations against other people and to destroy those manifestations. So in Lament Lamentations 60, I mean 3 and 61, it says, Thou hast heard their reproach, O Lord, and all their imaginations against me. And in Lamentations 3 and 60, Thou hast seen all their vengeance and all their imaginations against me. So there's people who have evil imaginations against people and how do you destroy that with 2 corinthians 10 and 5 casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of christ now evil to destroy evil cords and spell bindings so there's people who bind their self to you like love curses love spells just bind their self to people's money, people's success, people's manifestations, people's prosperity. A lot of things people do spell bindings for. Like, you know, people are wicked. There's just some people who are just really wicked. And they'll spell bind you. Like, tie their self to you with their binding spells. Now, Proverbs 5 and 22 his own iniquity shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holded with the cords of his sins. So, and Psalms 129 and 4. The Lord is righteous. He has cut asunder the cords of the wicked. So this destroys evil cords and spell bindings. When people spell bind you and bind you to them, you know, with magic and all kinds of sorcery and with love spells and spell bindings to bind their bind you with sex, bind you with their bodies, bind you with their privy parts. This cuts off all of those things. Psalms 129 and 4. The Lord is righteous. He has cut asunder the cords of the wicked. Now, evil substance, because this is another way that people do evil with evil substance. Proverbs 10 and 3. The Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, but he casts away the substance of the wicked. So destroying all evil substance against you, you use Proverbs 10 and 3. But he casts away the substance of the wicked. Now destroying evil eye against you. Isaiah 29 and 20. For the terrible one is brought to naught, and the scorner is consumed, and all that watch for iniquity are cut off. So all those that use their eyes for iniquity against you, that's evil eye, God will cut them off in their iniquity use Isaiah 29 and 20 now all evil wishes because there's people who you know have ill wishes ill intent against people and they make evil wishes against people right Psalms 40 and 14 let them be ashamed and confounded together that seek after my soul to destroy it let them be driven backward and put to shame that wish me evil so there's people who wish other people evil and to combat these things, you have to use the word of God. 3 John 1 and 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayst prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. So that's a good wish. I wish above all things that thou mightst prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. 2 Corinthians 13 and 9. For we are glad when we are weak, and ye and ye are strong and this also we wish 
even your perfection. So that's a good wish. We wish your perfection. Now Job 33 and 6, Behold, I am according to thy wish in God's stead. So God's wish for you. Behold, I am according to thy wish in God's stead. I also am formed out of thy clay. Evil words, so this is destroying evil words, evil pronunciations, evil decrees and declarations that have been fashioned against you. With Psalms 33 and 10, the Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. Naught means nothing. It's no more. Null and void. He makes the devices of the people of none effect. This is also destroying evil devices. This one scripture, this one scripture here. The Lord brings the counsel of the heathen to naught. He makes the devices of the people of none effect. Now, to also combat evil words against you, evil pronunciations, evil decrees and declarations, you know, evil names and evil things that people say and lies and things, you use Isaiah 7 and 7. Thus says the Lord God, it shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass when people are bad mouthing over you. When with Isaiah 8 and 10, take counsel together and it shall come to naught. Speak the word and it shall not stand for God is with us. What word are you supposed to speak? The name of Christ, Emmanuel, because Emmanuel means God with us. That's why it says take counsel together. The name that's above all names, take counsel together and it shall come to naught. Speak the word and it shall not stand for God is with us. What is the word you're supposed to speak, Emmanuel? Because it means God with us. But people don't understand that because they didn't ask God the understanding of the scripture and they call Christ's name wrong ignorantly when it's in the Old and the New Testament. They just need to read Isaiah chapter 7, Isaiah chapter 8, and to read it in math. It What is it? I think it's in Matthew. It's in the New Testament. If I'm not, it, it is in the New Testament. So Psalms 140 and 11. Let not an evil speaker be established in the earth. So people who's speaking evil over you. Let not an evil speaker be established in the earth. Evil shall hunt the violent man to overthrow them. Now, with Psalms 64, we're going to read from 64 to uh, I'm about 16... 64 to, to to 8 all right because i just want to give you the full understanding hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked this is from secret workers of darkness secret societies those are secret counsel of the wicked people who operate in secrecy hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked from the insurrections of the workers of iniquity those works are works of iniquity. God calls them iniquity workers. Who weed their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words. That they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. They commune of laying snares. Privily, they say who shall see them. They search out iniquities, they accomplish a diligent search, both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. But God shall shoot at them with an arrow, suddenly shall they be wounded, so they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away. Now to break evil covenants, evil contracts, evil embargoes, and evil agreements you use isaiah 28 and 18 and your covenant with death shall be disannulled and your agreement with hell shall not stand when the overflowing scourge shall pass through then you shall be trotted down by it because this also can go with you can also use isaiah 7 and 7 thus says the lord god it shall not stand neither shall it come to pass breaking evil embargoes evil covenants evil agreements now to destroy evil bands psalms 119 and 61 the bands of the wicked this is this is what bands of wickedness do the bands of the wicked have robbed me but i have not forgotten thy law 
so you use Psalms 107 and 14. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and break their bands in sunder. And you would use Isaiah 58 and 6. It is not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness. So there's bands of wickedness. This is what you're destroying evil bands with. Psalms 119 and 61. The bands of... I mean, sorry. Psalms 107 and 14. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and break their bands in sunder. And Isaiah 58 and 6. Is this... Is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens? So not only does this destroy evil bands, it undoes heavy burdens and let the oppressed go free. It removes oppression, heaviness, evil bands, and that you break every yoke, breaking every evil yoke. But this you use with, with fasting, right? But you can also speak it over your life because the word of God cannot be broken. And you can use Isaiah, Hosea 11 and 4. I drew them with cords of a man, with bands of love. And I was to them as they that take off the yoke off their jaws and laid meat on to them. Now, evil, destroying evil yokes. You, you, you know, you could use Isaiah 58 and 6, but you can also use... Isaiah 10 and 27 and it shall come to pass in that day you can anoint your head with oil you know olive oil is anointing oil you bless it and that's your anointing oil you anoint your head with oil your cup run it's over surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life that's Psalms 23 now Isaiah 10 and 27 it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulders and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. So, yeah. This, when you anoint your head, you can use Isaiah 10 and 27. Because it removes all burdens from off your shoulders. It breaks every evil yoke off your neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Now, evil work. Destroying evil work set up against you. Isaiah 41 and 24. Behold, you are of nothing, and your work of naught. That's bringing the work to naught. And God says, In an abomination is he that chooses you. Now Isaiah 32 and 17. And the work of righteousness shall be peace. So evil work is, is brought to naught by God. But work of righteousness brings you peace. And remember, there's no peace to the wicked because they're doing evil works. So work of righteousness righteousness if you're doing work that is righteous it'll bring you peace you're going to be in peace if you're doing work of unrighteousness it's only going to bring you what no rest no rest for the wicked no peace for the wicked because they're not doing works of righteousness you see how there's one set it against it one set against the other light and darkness and the work of righteousness shall be peace and the effect of righteousness quietness and assurance forever now to destroy gates of brass bars of iron and powers you dark powers of darkness you use psalms 107 and 14 he brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and break their bands in sunder oh i think oh i did i put the Anyways, Doctrine and Covenants 121 and 6. For by doing these things, the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. Ye and the Lord God will disperse the powers of darkness from before you and cause the heavens to shake for your good and his name's glory. Now, Doctrine and Covenants... 138 and 23 and the saints rejoiced in their redemption and bowed the knee and acknowledged the son of god as their redeemer and deliverer from the from death and the chains of hell so this is breaking chains breaking gates bars of iron and gates of brass doctrine and covenants 24 and 1 behold that was called as chosen to write the book of Mormon. And to my ministry, and I have lifted thee up out of thy afflictions, and have counseled thee. 
This is lifting you up out of afflictions, God counseling thee, and thou has been delivered from all thy enemies, and thou has been delivered from the powers of Satan and from darkness. So this delivers you from affliction, from all your enemies, from the powers of Satan, and from darkness. Doctrine and Covenants 101 and 1. Oh, I don't, sorry, that's there twice. Now, we're in destroying evil writings and ordinances against you. So, Colossians 2 and 14, bloating out the handwritten of ordinance that was against us. So God will bloat them out, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. So they could, this is Psalms 119 and 91. I just wanted to read Colossians 2 and 14 first. They continue this day according to thy ordinances, for all are thy servants. So, Colossians 2 and 15. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Now to destroy snares, traps, nets, mischief against you, you use Psalms 124 and 7. This is, and also to break witchcraft, to break curses, to break spells, to break bewitchments. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken and we are escaped. That breaks curses. The, the snare is broken. The curse is broken. The bewitchment's broken. The black magic's broken. The witchcraft, whatever. The snare is broken and we are escaped. So you're escaped from those snares. Isaiah 29 and 21. That makes a man an offender. This is what people do. That make a man an offender for a word and lay a snare for him that reproves in the gate. So people lay snares for people who, who speak the truth and reprove them and turn aside the just for a thing of naught because they don't like the truth that they're speaking. Now, this is destroying snares, traps, nets, and mischief. So you got Psalms 124 and 7, and now we're going to go to Psalms 9 and 15. The heathen are sunk down, sunk down in the pit that they made. In the net which they have hid is their own foot taken. And Psalms 19 and 16. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executes. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Psalms 17 and 15 to 16. He made a pit and digged it, and is fallen into the ditch which he made. His mischief shall return upon his own head, and his violent dealing shall come down upon his own pate. Now, Psalms 35 and 8. Let destructions come upon him at unawares, and let the net which he has hid catch himself. Into that very destruction let him fall. So those who are setting nets for you, what does God say? Let, what does the word of God say? Let his net that he has hid catch himself. Into that very destruction they were trying to set for you, let them fall in it. You dig a pit, you fall in it. I, Psalms 57 and 6. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. His soul is bowed down to God. They have digged a pit, a, digged a pit before me into the midst whereof they are fallen themselves. So those digging pits for you and laying nets for your steps, they'll fall in it themselves. Psalms 25 and 5. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. This is delivering you from nets that they set for your feet. Proverbs 11 and 5. The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way, but the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. When people are trying to do wickedness against you, the wicked shall fall by their own wickedness. Now, those who are trying to cause you to go out of the right way, to cause you to go astray. Proverbs 28 and 10. Whosoever causes the righteous to go astray in an evil way, he shall fall himself into his own pit, but the upright shall have good things in possession. Evil desires. So this is destroying people's evil desires against you. 
Psalms 140 and 8. Grant not, O Lord, the desires of the wicked. Further not his wicked device, lest they exalt themselves. Selah. Now destroying charms and confusion. Psalms 58 and 5. Which will not hearken to the voice of charmers, charming never so wisely. Psalms 71 and 1. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. This destroys all confusion. And and read Psalm 71 and 2. So Psalm 70, just read Psalm 71. It's a powerful and a strong and it's a good prayer. Deliver me in thy righteousness and cause me to escape. Escape confusion. Incline thy ear unto me and save me. Save from Be thou my strong habitation whereunto I may continually resort. Thou hast given commandment to save me, for thou art my rock and my fortress. Psalm 71 delivers from confusion and keeps you safe in a strong habitation with God. And to destroy like confusion is 2 Timothy 1 and 7. To destroy confusion of the mind. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So this also destroys fear. 2 Timothy 1 and 7 destroys the spirit of fear and fear and confusion because it gives you a sound mind. And Ephesians 4 and 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Now to destroy chains, trouble, and darkness... Alma 26 and 14, yeah, we have reason to praise him forever, for he is the most high God and has loosed our brethren from the chains of hell. Yeah, they were encircled about with everlasting darkness and destruction, but behold, he has brought them into his everlasting light, his everlasting light, yeah, into the everlasting salvation. They are encircled about with the matchless bounty of his love. Yeah, and we have been instruments in his hand of doing this great and marvelous work. So also to come out of darkness. 1 Peter 2 and 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Psalms 107 and 19 to be de to be delivered from trouble and out of distress then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble and he saves them out of all their distresses then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble and he bringeth them out of their distresses Psalms 107 and 13 then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble and he saved them out of all their distresses distresses psalms 107 and 6 then they cried unto the lord in their trouble and he delivered them out of all their distresses so we have delivered saved bringing them out save it them out of their distress dis distresses now to be delivered from pollution uncleanness and defilement you use alma Twin, and, and this also goes with poisons. To, so anything that you ate, anything that you drink, any type of, you know, poison someone have given, given you. Or you know how there's wicked women and wicked men who put things in people's drink, potions and spells and, you know, enchantments. Wicked works for, you know, love spells. This destroys all of these things. The stuff that they put in your whatever that you took, you intake, you know, either ate, drink, or even smoked or touched. These things, that those, it's this removes pollution, uncleanness, and defilement and poisons. These scriptures, this is what God wants you to use so He can deliver you. Alma 26 and 17. Who could have supposed that our God? would have been so merciful as to have snatched us from our awful, sinful, and polluted state. So God will deliver you from what? From being awful, 
sinful and your polluted state. Now, Mark 16 and 18. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. You know, poisons, deadly things, potions, spells, these things. You use these scriptures. And from defilement. Mark 7 and 15. There is nothing from without a man that enters him can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. So anything that you that went in your mouth, that you intake, you use it. There's nothing from without a ma a man that entering him can defile him. Father, let nothing that came out, that came inside of me, defile me. Use the word of God. Mark 7 and 19. Because it enters not into his heart, but into the belly and goes out of the drought, purging all meats. Father, whatever evil food, evil drink, enchantment, love curse, ungodliness that I've eaten, if I've drinking, please purge it out of me and let it come out of the drought purging all means now to be cleaned you know from your filthiness as well ezekiel 36 and 25 then will i sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will i cleanse you ezekiel 36 and 26 a new heart also will i give you and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and will give you a heart of flesh. Now, all uncleannesses. Ezekiel 36 and 29. I will also save you from all your uncleannesses, uncleansinesses, uncleannesses, and I will call for the corn, and will increase it, and lay no famine upon you. And you could also use the blood of Christ, 1 Peter 1 and 19. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Father, make me, with the blood of Christ, make me without blemish and without spot from any defilement, from any pollution, from anything that came inside of my body, my soul, my spirit, my mind, from the crown of my head to under the sole of my feet. So... And um, also you can ask God to cast out any devil, any unclean spirit with his finger, right? Now, this is a powerful prayer. In Doctrine and Covenants 129 to 24, this covers a genre, a genre of a lot of the things that I've just went through. And God wants me to read it to you. We ask the Holy Father to establish the people that shall worship and honorably hold a name and standing in this this thy house to all generations and for eternity that no weapon formed against them shall prosper that he who digs a pit for them shall fall into the same himself that no combinations of wickedness shall have power to rise up and prevail over thy people whom thy name shall be put in this house and if any people shall rise against this people that thy anger be kindled against them and if they shall smite this people with thou will smite them thou will fight for thy people as thou did in the day of battle that they may be delivered from the hand of all their enemies we ask thee holy father to confound and to astonish and to bring to shame and confusion all those that have spread lying reports abroad over the world against thy servants or servants if they will not repent when the everlasting gospel shall be proclaimed in their ears and that all their works may be brought to naught all their evil works brought to naught you remember when i went up i said evil works brought to naught the work bring god brings the evil works to naught and all their works may be brought to naught and be swept away by the hail and by thy judgments which thou wilt send upon them in thy anger that there be an end 
to lyings and slanders against thy people. For thou knowest, O Lord, that thy servants have been innocent before thee in bearing record of thy name, for which they have suffered these things. Therefore we plead before thee for a full and complete deliverance from under this yoke. Break it off, O Lord. Break it off from the necks of thy servants by thy power that we may rise up in the midst of this generation and do thy work. And so basically, this is the scriptures God wants you to know, know to be delivered from pollution, uncleanness, defilement, and the list goes on. And I just want to see how it said the works brought to naught. We're going to go back up to evil works. Evil work. Isaiah 41 and 24 behold ye are of nothing and your work of naught so evil works will be brought to naught all right beautiful people have a blessed well Sabbath have a blessed day I love you all take care